does have mortgage insurance. Even if you put down 20%, you're going to have FA, you're going to have mortgage insurance. Okay, if you got 20% down, and you don't have the credit to qualify for a conventional loan, there's nothing that says you can't do an FHA loan, but you still will have mortgage insurance for a minimum of five years. Okay. What's happened recently, and this may be in the news or email and, and on the line, you may have seen stuff about how they've raised the MIP. They have uh, changed it a little bit to where the upfront mortgage insurance has decreased, where it used to be 1.5, then 1.75 in the loan amount, then 1. Point, uh, and then 2.25 back in uh, uh, March of 2010. They lowered it in October to 1% of the loan amount. So uh, the, the the loan that they pay in principal and interest on is significantly lower, okay, than what it used to be before this guideline change. What they did do is raise the monthly premium payment to where it's more on par with a 3% down conventional loan. Uh, so the MIP has gone up, and it raised the the it went up in, in April 18th, but when you compare it to private mortgage insurance at 3 and 5% down, it's still very competitive. So if somebody wants to have a slightly lower MIP, if they put 5% down, they'll get a better deal uh, by uh, just a, a slight margin. And if if they're in a state where the property purchase level is, is lower or if it's a lower-priced property, they can do a 15-year loan with 10% down and have a remarkably lower MIP of only a factor of only a quarter, point, point 0.25 of a percent. Um, watching the chat log, any questions that uh, come up on that, please jump in. So it's uh, 1 uh, 35, and uh, this was uh, advertised as a one hour uh, slide uh, show and, and webinar, so we're, we're on track to finish a few minutes early, I think. Uh, so FHA property. So uh, circa in the 2008 and prior, uh, there, we had these concerns. Uh, HUD changed it to make it more of an as-is product. It does have a health and safety component. So what they're going to say is the following: you know, is the property safe? Is there anything wrong with the property that makes it unsafe? Okay. Is it a soundly built property? The appraiser is going to be looking for the, the, the construction quality and may comment on that. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, and then, of course, the most important thing of the appraisal is does the value support the loan? So, but now it's as is. They resemble a conventional appraisal. So the issues that, uh, that come up um, are typically not going to cause a, a problem unless there's something that affects the the safety and, and, and health of the occupants, okay? FHA uh, does typically want to see a stove. Uh, I didn't put this on the slide, but uh, if you've got a kitchen where all the appliances are missing, FHA, if it's a built-in appliance and it's missing the stove, uh, make a mental note seller wants to put a stove in or even the buyer can put it in once the loan's approved. So it's one of the nuances. I mean, you just need to be able to uh, to, to uh, cook a meal, I guess. So <laughs> it also needs to have a functioning heater, even in Southern California, if you would uh, believe it. So if there's a, a, a you know, no heating system and it's a wood-fired stove, it may not be eligible for FHA. But um, um, so there's certain nuances about the, the heating and uh, heating systems and so forth or the stove. So just make a note, stove and heat. Uh, but as far as the property itself, the two areas that are still a concern are damaged roofs and peeling paint that may be lead paint. So if the age of the house is such that it predates, I think, 1978, so anything built before 1980, where the paint is peeling off inside or outside, as a realtor, note that and note the the, the purchase or the the build date, and it may be a situation where if that peeling paint is a uh, is a problem, the appraiser may note it, take pictures of it, and the underwriter may ask them to do some lead paint abatement uh, to deal with that. So. Uh, and then same thing with damaged roofs. If there's a lot of trees and there's debris falling on the roofs, uh, you know, 
make sure it's great to meet the appraiser if you're the listing or, or buy, uh, sorry if you're the selling agent or the buyer's agent and you know help them you know to know that hey that stuff that fell on the roof is just a bunch of leaves and other uh, pine needles or whatever it is not uh, damage or, or hole in the in the roof tiles um, and uh, otherwise the underwriter is going to look at the picture and say is that a hole in the roof you know appraiser comments so modular homes are still eligible in other words, a pre-built home that's uh, attached to a permanent foundation. Manufactured homes, single or double wide type of ma trailer type homes, technically still permitted, but we don't do them and most lenders don't like them. So it's it's a hard property to finance right now if it's, if it's ever had wheels under it and it's not attached to the foundation. So, Okay. Solution to these property issues would be this 203k. So watch for a webinar that I do frequently called How to Sell Ugly Houses. I'm sorry for the title but uh, and the blurry image there. But when you've got property issues that can't pass the inspection component of the appraisal, we just flip it to a 203k and we can finance if the utilities are on up to $31,000 and we'll have an escrow of up to 35000 so the borrower doesn't have to move in. Mortgage payment gets paid for a couple months while the work is being done, uh, fixing that. Uh, not just uh, these, these serious issues, uh, non-structural serious issues, but cosmetic issues. So if you're not familiar, everyone's familiar because everyone's talking about this, but this is a loan program that we, we close. We just got a contract come in on Monday for another 203K here in the office. So it's a great program. Um, let's talk about property in the context of flips and rapid appreciation. So FHA guidelines don't permit flips under 90 days in the guidelines. Okay, so if a seller buys a property, they need to hold it for 90 days in, until they sell the property. A purchase agreement dated inside of 90 days is in violation of FHA guidelines. There is a waiver, okay, that occurred in the early 2010 and it was extended again this year, so it was extended one year at a time to allow FHA loans to be used uh, on these flips, these distressed REOs that investors are buying and fixing up. What to expect? You know, I'll give you an example, one that we're dealing with here in the office right now. Uh, seller bought the property in mid-April. I think on April 15th or April 16th, 142,000 properties listed at 215, and uh, uh, just about 60 days later, property went under uh, a full renovation rehab. And uh, but it, is it really worth 70 plus thousand dollars more uh, in 60 days? And that's what the lenders have a problem with: is this rapid appreciation and increase. So under the flipping waiver, what you're going to expect is a longer approval process. Um, you either ask for it up front or ask for it shortly after you get in contract once you understand some of the, the, the do's and don'ts of, of what's going to happen on the process. It's going to require two appraisals. Some lenders allow that second appraisal to be pushed back onto the buyer. We don't. So if we have a flip, we pay for the second appraisal because it's our problem, it's our issue of saying, hey, we've got to have two appraisals. So first appraisal is done, second appraisal is done, they, we lower the two appraisals, and they're totally uh, independent. The other thing that's unique about this, and this comes to, to I mean, lenders just view flips as uh, a recipe for fraud or covering up problems with the house. So they, you know, they think the flippers just come in there and drywall everything and, and paint it and, and put a nice... Uh, uh, granite countertops and throw in some cheap imported uh, wood cabinets and uh, spit shine the uh, landscaping and then put the sign up and sell it, right? So they put $20,000 of, of labor into it and, and you know $10,000 of, of, of work and then they make uh, $60,000 in, 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 in 60 days and that's their, their view of flippers. So they really want to look at the property inspection and make sure uh, you know, so the property inspection, there's a waiver that's required the buyer to sign, and the buyer must uh, see that property inspection to make sure that they understand what may not be done properly with the rehab. 
uh, and there's going to be a big arm's length review because a lot of times these flippers buy them and hold them in a limited partnership or LLC. So the underwriters look at the entity that, that's selling the property. There's an identity of interest and arm's length disclosure. So it's just a little more arduous process, but it's sometimes easier to get a, a flip done through FHA with the waiver than it is with conventional. That's the strange thing which conventional Fannie Freddie don't have any rules about flipping, but lenders do. Okay. And uh, rapid appreciation. Anyway, so I could talk for hours about flipping. And this is an area, if you're a realtor and you don't know about flipping, uh, uh, we're going to do some webinars about it. But uh, it's something to, to know more about. And the more uh, you educate your buyer or know what you're facing if you're listing an investor's flip, uh, that you can explain to them why it's such a pain to get these financed. It's, you'll be smarter for it. So rapid appreciation, the magic number is 20% higher. Okay. So let's, uh, how to calculate appreciation. Most realtors do this incorrectly, but you're going to take the buyer's price, um, which let's say it was that 215. Um, um, uh, where where are we at here? So uh, the uh, we're going to basically take the uh, the uh, buyer's price 215 minus the uh, 142, which is our appreciation of 73,000, and divide that by uh, the seller's cost of 142. That formula may be incorrect. It doesn't read correctly, but it's uh, basically you're going to take 142 215 minus 142 in this example. Um, and uh, divide that by the seller's cost. A lot of times people divide the $70,000 into the, the, the list price or the buyer's price. So uh, the reason this reads funny, by the way, buyer's price slash list price, that's all one unit. So uh, 215 whoops, minus 142. So that's not to be a divide symbol. Sorry, that formula does not read correctly. So one, uh, 215 minus 142 divided by 142. So in this case, it's a 51% appraisal uh, appreciation. So obviously uh, over 20%. If I were a flipper, I'd buy that property and, and uh, position it as a 203K rehab, and, but it's harder to sell those properties when they've got a lot of uh, issues. So, All right, anyway, uh, what to request or ask, uh, you know, when the flipping waiver first came out, there was a lot of emphasis on receipts and invoices on the improvements. It's hard to get sometimes, and a lot of times the work is done for cash, and the invoices are all inflated, and the underwriters never believe it anyway. So it's good to find out if the seller will give us before and after photos. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't, but it's a real, a real benefit to, uh, to know what, what happened to the property. And uh, take a look at the, is the seller a uh, entity, uh, just to know uh, what we're facing when we go into it. So coming soon, uh, you know, flipping webinar, we'll spend uh, more than five minutes on this topic and uh, give you the lowdown and keep you abreast of the changes. So it's a, it is a hot area of FHA lending, and it is an area where there is constant change. Uh, so...